Beach FM, locals talking to locals. I can welcome in another of our wonderful film reviewers. My pleasure to welcome Peter Edwards with Knives Out. Morning, I don't John. Know. Goodness me, do we need security in here, Peter? Uh, well, no. I think we're we're fairly safe, okay. locked away in here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Knives Out. Which, uh, yeah, a, a really good film. Um, now, Knives Out was ri- both written, directed, and produced by a guy called Rian Johnson. I've never heard of him, mm. but then a lot of the directors are fairly new names to me. But he's got a string of pretty acclaimed, pretty well acclaimed, and well known directing credits to his name. Star Wars The Last Jedi was probably the best of them. And I understand, reading up on the internet, he's going to be writing and directing a brand new Star Wars trilogy in the not too distant future. And so, is that the one that's going on this streaming channel? Don't know. Don't because know. I understand that Star Wars is carrying on at a great pace on this new Disney Plus channel that has been launched yeah. in this country. Has it? Well, if my not now, it will it's be not shortly. directly concerning the original character. So this yes. is totally, uh, uh, no, I, totally I, new. Rings bells. Anyhow, I'm sorry to. Yeah, no, that's no problem. But you know, but, but given all that, then there's obviously a considerable pedigree to the background of this thoroughly entertaining film, and then mm. it's enhanced by a, a, a seasoned cast with some, in many cases, totally unexpected roles. Mm. Come to that in a okay. moment. Now, the story revolves around the death of a highly successful mystery writer, Harlan Thromby, played by a brilliant Christopher Plummer. The first you see of him is him lying in his office with his throat cut. It is to say, he's discovered with his throat cut, and because he's still got the knife in his hand, it's suggested that um, the obvious explanation is it's a suicide. Maybe not, Mm. but that's what the local police think. But it seems that someone has paid a very famous private detective, a chap called Benoit Blanc. I'll call him Benny because that's how he's referred to throughout the film. But Benny is there to carry out a thorough investigation into Harlan's death. Now, just how or why the the police allow Benny to front up the investigation isn't altogether clear. Very unusual circumstances, but that's that's the way the script is written. But as it, and as it turns out, his presence becomes pretty fundamental to the plot, and a very good plot it turns out to be. Mm. Now, Benny is played by Daniel Craig. Wow! Uh, in a totally un James Bond like role, a very impressive, mm. albeit unexpected, southern drawl, and a style very reminiscent of Hercule Poirot. Really. Now, he's got to contend with Harlan's awful family, and they are t- totally dreadful, they really are. There's daughter Linda, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Now, she's a successful okay. businesswoman. Her husband is Richard, played by Don Johnson. Gosh. And they have a son called Ransom, who's an awful character, as it turns out to be. And then there's Harlan's son, Walt, played by Michael Shannon, and he runs the family's publishing business. His wife, Joni, is Tony Collette, who I think mm-hmm. is probably well-known in certain Australia. In the Antipodes, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they, of course, have a son and daughter who don't really figure too, too, too much. And then, finally, there's the oldest of the family, Harlan's mother. Who she, and she sits muffled up in a chair, always seeing, seldom speaking. And, and nobody knows how old she is. But when you, it's given that Harlan was murdered at the age of 85. Oh. Well, you do the math, as the <laughs> Americans would say. And finally, in the house, there's this uh, lovely pseudo-nurse, Harlan pseudo-nurse and confidant, who, who, and she's played by um, Anna de Arnas, that's her name is Marta. Now, she turns out to be the principal character in, turning, in, happy, sorry, in, in establishing what happened to Harlan. And finally, the best of all, everybody lives in this dreadful Gothic-style mansion, and it's just like something out of the Munsters or the Adams family. <laughs> and I kept wondering when the thunderstorms would come or the ghostly apparitions would start to appear. Yes, yes. But anyway, I'll, I'll get on to some some elements of the story, which really kicks off when, at the reading of Harlan's will, it transpires that he has left everything 
to his nurse and confidant, Marta. Ah. Now, the family, they've been left Not nothing, happy. of course, but they're stunned, and what follows is a succession of pleas to Marta from different family members, and there's even blackmail suggesting that Marta herself was involved in Harlan's death. So, in a sense, the knives are out. But as it turns out, Marta's got a pretty important part to play in Harlan's demise, but in a very Machiavellian type of twist, and in the best traditions of Agatha Christie, a totally unexpected outcome mm. is the end product. Now, I thought Daniel Craig was quite superb. And the ending where Benny reveals all to the assembled family, <laughs> just like a Hercule Poirot <laughs> sort of um, episode, it simply shows us what a talented actor he is. And the young Anya de Arnas as Marta is an actress who's certainly got to watch out for. Now, as you probably know, I'm not the greatest lover of flashbacks, but in this case, they worked even for me. <laughs> I was become... going to ask you, did, did Christopher Plummer have a speaking part? Oh, yes. OK. Yes. Yeah. See, they become an inter- see these flashbacks yes. become yes. a part, integral part of the plot in sure. explaining Harlan's interplays with Marta and the various family members. And in doing so, they emphasise how, just how good an actor Christopher Plummer mm. is. I mean, mm. I mean, he's still going at 89. Mm. Amazing. It is. How he, I mean, I have problems with lines when I do my little things, but how he does it at 89 and remembers all those lines, I really don't know. It's quite a cast, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's I mean, great. it's billed as a crime mystery thriller. Yes. But for me, it was a, a whodunit in the very best traditions of the name with just enough twists, turns and comedy to keep me guessing and entertained. Wonderful. And, and entertained I was. Probably, well, certainly one of the best films I've seen this year. Goodness. Well, that's saying so. So it's on at the Shoreline twice weekly for the rest of the week. There's the schedule. Thank you. Ah. Give us a call and uh, we'll let you know. Uh, when it best suits you, we can negotiate a time at the wonderful Shoreline Cinema. Peter, thank you for joining us. Very welcome. Yet another wonderful movie to contemplate. 106.3 BGFM.